welcome to Learning Music with Pat. I have started answering a series of questions that I have received several times over on some of these questions to help you to understand more about what people are thinking about in terms of musical instruments, how to choose them, should they have more than one. And I remember last time I talked a lot about using keyboards and why I use keyboards and how handy they are in terms of showing students how notes relate to each other and things like that. So and then I started answering another question on should you play a second instrument? What if you want to play a second instrument? Or maybe more than one? How would you choose the instruments? What do you have to consider in terms of making a choice? I know that most people who are instrumentalists, they like to play more than one. If they're drawn to music, if they love music, then they're going to love all kinds of instruments. But I really believe that people are drawn to certain classes of instruments. Not only are they drawn to music, which is a genetic thing, many times inherited, but they're also drawn to certain classes of instruments like guitars or piano or woodwinds or brass. And I think that is also genetic, just like the fact that you love music is genetic. Your choice of instrument classes is also genetic. But what about choosing a second instrument? Should you have a second instrument? Should you play a second instrument? Well, I'm a person who has approximately 180 instruments in my collection. And I play almost all of them. I do not play the brass. I do not play violins, although I have a very rare violin, which I have brought in here, the Flem Spalding violin. And I do have a trombone, and I've had that in here too. But all of the wood ones, unless they're in, in a state of disrepair to the point where I cannot play them, I play every instrument that I've got. And uh, it's very fascinating to me how you play the various instruments, the various tones, and I think it's typical of many musicians that they want to play more than one. So in answer to the question, should I play a second instrument if I want to, my answer is usually the more the merrier, play as many as you want. But there are some considerations that you might want to take into, uh, into your thoughts before you make a decision as to what you play or if you play a second instrument. For example, do you have the resources to buy instruments or to buy another instrument? It's important for you to have your own. It's much more satisfying for you to play your own instrument than to borrow somebody else's. You know, if my car goes in for repair and I have a rental car, no matter how good that rental car is, I want my own back. I'm comfortable in it, I know how it works, I know the idiosyncrasies that it has, and you're just much more comfortable playing your own instrument. So there is the finances of buying an instrument. You don't have to buy the most expensive. Student models work very well. If you get a really, really good student model, instead of a professional model. You can play a lot of music, you can do very well with it. So not every instrument has to be so top notch that, that to pay more would break the bank. So, but you do have to consider the finances. Good instruments are expensive. The other thing is a time factor. Do you love to practice enough that you can spend double time practicing? Because it's gonna take a lot of extra time to practice. I'm gonna show you the instruments you should stay away from in a minute, but just consider the fact that you are going to be doubling your time in practice. Now, I was a person who always loved to practice. When I was a child, my father used to stop me. He thought I was practicing too much. And he would say, Pat, I'm glad you love music. I'm glad you're practicing, but you need to spend time playing with children. Go outside and play with some of the children. And so he used to stop me because I was practicing too much. A lot of people, though, don't like to practice. To them, it's a royal pain. And so how do you handle that? If you're not going to be able to practice because you don't like to practice, but you want to play, then you have a decision to make. If you're not going to be able to practice because you don't like it, you may as well not buy the instrument to begin with. I know that there are some people 
who uh, want to buy an instrument and just pick it up and just kind of fool around with it and play it. But that's not being fair to yourself if you want to learn, and it's not being fair to anyone else who's buying an instrument for you. It's a waste of money if you're paying for it yourself. I've had, I think, two or three saxophone students who, when they got to a certain point, taking lessons from me, and they were doing well, they decided they weren't going to take lessons anymore. They were just going to pick up the instrument and play and join a jazz band somewhere. And they weren't going to have to learn anymore. But without the basic fundamentals, you don't know how to play very well. Anyone can pick up an instrument, blow on it, and get a few notes. And to an untrained person, that may sound OK. But it's not OK if you're a musician, because you really don't understand the instrument. It takes time to learn how to play and get the basics down. And just to pick up and play a few notes and pretend that you're a great musician just doesn't cut it. Another musician will spot that in an instant. And I also get asked a lot, what is the easiest instrument to play? And I always have to stop and think, what is the motivation for the question? Is it a purely academic question? Uh, I want to play an instrument, which one would be the simplest for me to play? And that's a legitimate question, and it deserves an answer. Or is it because a person doesn't want to spend time practicing and they just want to pick up something and play and they don't want to bother to practice? There are instruments that are simpler than others to play, but they all have their challenges. So when somebody asks me, what instrument is the easiest instrument to play? I usually say, it depends upon how well you want to play them. Because if you want to play them well, any instrument is going to have a set of challenges to go with it. There's no way around it. But on the other hand, I often suggest that people start off with in wind instruments, such as the recorder. They're fairly easy to finger. They're fairly easy to blow into. And you can play an awful lot of music with it. And I don't want you to think that the simple recorder is just a childhood toy. There are in Europe recorder orchestras where everybody plays recorders. You could have a 40-piece band or a 40-piece orchestra and everybody is playing a recorder. They are capable of playing very, very difficult music. I arrange classical music on recorders, but as far as the physical nature of it, they are a simple instrument to play. You have your finger holes, and we've gone over this before, B, A, G, F, E, D, with a tone hole in the back, and a fipple mouthpiece, which you put in about a third of the way in your mouth, and your teeth on top of the instrument, the lower lip curved over the instrument, and you just blow in, and it plays beautifully. is in pitch with itself. Any instrument that you get, uh, whether it's a second-hand instrument, whether it's a new instrument, whether it's an instrument you're familiar with or not familiar with, what you want is an instrument that's easy to blow into, where you're not going to have to huff and puff to get air into it. And an instrument that is in pitch, most are, but some are. You have to have somebody check that out if you're not familiar with an instrument to make sure it's in pitch. And also that it is in pitch with itself. I have an instrument here. It, um, it, it's kind of a cute little thing. I brought it. It only cost me a dollar. And it sounds like it. Isn't that something? It was made more as a toy, and you can get notes out of it, but the notes are not in pitch with themselves, and no matter how hard I try, see, this would be the lowest note, and the highest note would be this. That should be an octave, and it's not because it's out of pitch with itself, but it only cost me a dollar.
So when you pick an instrument, if you're not familiar with an instrument and you want a second instrument, take somebody with you that knows instruments and they will be able to tell you uh, whether it's a good instrument to buy. There are other considerations besides the finances and the practicing. Uh, it, do you have the strength and the health to play a lot? Is music going to be so much a part of your life that you're going to be doing a lot with it? Or is, are you just going to pick up an instrument and play occasionally? Are you going to play several times a week? Are you going to join an orchestra or a band that travels? Are you going to be professional enough that you will go on tour? Or are you just going to fool around with it? Either way is legitimate. I'm not saying that one is necessarily better than the other. But you need to know what your playing style is going to be. And then choose an instrument. Now, I want to mention also about transference. Different, uh, different uh, fields of interest, such as psychology, uh, psychiatry, counseling, they use uh, transference in a, in a manner that we don't use it in music. Every field has its own definition of what transference means. But when you get to music, when you get to the fact of education and music, transference means that if you learn something, you can transfer that knowledge onto something else. If I know how to play the scale in the recorder, then I can play the scale on most woodwind instruments because you just transfer your knowledge from one thing to another thing. Here we have uh, a tone whistle. <laughs> Good, pretty good tone. And I can play that just from the strength of knowing how to play the recorder. The fingerings are similar, not exact, but similar. If you play a recorder and you switch to a saxophone, then you can, you, there's a lot of transference there. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. That's how you play it on a recorder. Now this happens to be a recorder that has a Baroque fingering pattern, so when you place down your F, you have to add this extra key to keep it in pitch. With the exception of this little key on the F, the saxophone plays that scale in exactly the same way using the same fingerings. So you can transfer from one instrument to another instrument. And the closer the instruments are together in terms of similarity, the easier it will be to learn it. Just by learning a recorder, and sometimes we use recorders in school. I've taught school children, and I've taught them recorders, and it makes a good baseline instrument because from the recorder, you can go fairly easy to flute, to saxophone, to clarinet. You have the basics of the fingerings already down. So transference means to learn something on one instrument, be able to apply it to another instrument, and, and not everything will be exactly the same. The mouthpiece will be different, and some things will be different, but a lot of the fingering patterns will be very similar. And the most similar they are, the easier it will be to learn a second instrument. The other thing to consider is if I'm going to play the woodwinds, which I do, and then I decide I want to play violin, there's no transference there at all. It's a completely different setup, completely different fingerings. I don't play stringed instruments, but if I did, if I started to learn, I would have to start from scratch and learn like any beginner. I wouldn't have anything any background in it to, to play in. So uh, it's important to remember that there are so many similarities in the instruments that as far as woodwinds are concerned, it's not going to be that hard to learn them, switching from one to another. So you have to consider the time, you have to consider the expense, you have to consider how well you want to play because every instrument has its challenges, 
You have to consider their, your strength, your endurance, what you want to do with it. And I think if you're a musician already, you don't even consider these things a lot. You say, well, I'd like to play flute. I already play saxophone and clarinet. I'd like to play flute. And that's how I got involved with the flute. I just decided I wanted to do it. And I already was playing saxophone and clarinet. I bought my first new instrument, was a flute, and I loved it, and I played it from the beginning. But there's quite a bit of difference in the mouthpiece, so I had to get used to that. And I took lessons to get used to that. So there's a lot that you can learn. Now, when you're dealing with children, and they want to play more than one instrument, you have to remember their age, their strength, their interest, whether they will practice or whether it's a passing fancy. I, I don't like to have parents paying tons of money for an instrument and then having it sit in the closet. That sometimes happens. Oh, I liked it, but I don't play it anymore. I haven't played it for years. I lost interest. And there is good money sitting on that saxophone or clarinet. I've picked up some of my instruments from people because they decided no longer to play them. And I always loved instruments, and they would say, I'll give it to you, Pat, and I'll sell it to you for a certain amount, and if I can afford it, I say, okay, and I buy it. So that's how I've gotten some of my instruments. With children, children have a very short attention span. You have to remember that. That's natural to them. The brain has to develop to a certain point before they can concentrate for very long. They just can't do it. It's not in their nature to do it. As they get older, they can concentrate more and more as the brain develops more and more. Believe it or not, the brain is not finished developing until about age 25. But by the time a, per, a child is an older child, they have enough concentration. So if they want to play and they want to concentrate, they can do it. But don't expect a young child to be able to concentrate like an adult or an older teen. They do not have the physical ability to do it. So those are all some of the considerations that you have to take into effect. And the one thing that you must not do, and I want to talk about embouchure a little bit, you must not, if you're playing brass, switch to woodwinds because of the embouchure. If you're playing woodwinds, you should not switch to the brass. Let me show you this char. I want to go into the embouchure a little bit to, so you will understand what I mean. This is the flute, the trumpet, saxophone, clarinet, recorder, and this I put in it stands for various recorder-like instruments. So you have, if you want to scan the mouthpieces, the flute or piccolo has a raised mouthpiece that goes under your lip. You don't put it in your mouth, you put it under your lip and blow across it. The trumpet has a bell-like um, mouthpiece and uh, that you put up to your lip. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Saxophones cl and clarinets have a mouthpiece with a reed. You put it in your mouth. Recorders have a fippled mouthpiece, no reeds, but it vibrates the way that it's shaped. This is, um, uh, this is the mouthpiece of a clarinet without the reed and with the reed on. So let me just demonstrate this a little bit and explain more about why you cannot switch instruments if you're playing brass, no woodwinds. If you're playing woodwinds, no brass, unless you want to give them up completely and start fresh. Here is a piccolo. This is a Gramintat piccolo. If you look at the mouthpiece, the it's just like a flute mouthpiece, except it's smaller. It goes under your lip and you blow across it. You blow across it. And some of the air goes down in, the other blows across it. But it's up. It's up right up to your lip. But not in your mouth. All right? But if you take a, and this is a clarinet mouthpiece. The reason I added those pictures is that I like to use uh, a plastic coated reed. And they're black, so it may be hard to see. But this is the clarinet mouthpiece with the reed on it, the ligature tightened, the other side of it, it goes in your mouth, and then the, the reed vibrates as you put your teeth on the mouthpiece, your lip or your, your bottom teeth, 
and the reed's in perfect shape, but since it is plastic coated, it is black, so it might be a little hard to distinguish it from the mouthpiece itself. It looks like it's one single piece, but it's not. You tighten the ligature around it to hold it in place, and you put it in your mouth to play. Saxophone mouthpieces are the same, except they're larger. The basic mouthpiece shape is the same. Uh, if you play a trombone, this is a trombone mouthpiece. I do own a trombone. This is the inside of it. From the side, it looks a little like a bell, you know, it looks a little like a bell. You put it up to your mouth. <coughs> now I can't get a good sound of it because I don't play it, but you put it up to your mouth, kind of squeeze your lips together. If you're going to do that consistently because you're playing trombone or you're playing trumpet, you are going to hurt the embouchure that you have already developed for the reeds. The embouchure is the mu muscle tension around your mouth that you use to make sounds with woodwinds and brass. You're not going to have it on violins, guitars, piano, uh, percussion. You know, you're not going to have anything like that because those instruments do not go in your mouth, harps or anything like that. But when you get a mouth uh, piece that goes either in your mouth, up to your mouth, or under your lips, something like that, you develop an embouchure where your muscles learn to contract to a certain degree and hold it there. And the same with the recorders, and because uh, it goes into your mouth, this is the recorder mouthpiece, it's known as the Fipple mouthpiece, and they're re really easy to play. but you learn how to contract your muscles and you get so used to it, your muscles just automatically do what they're supposed to do. But the problem is if you're gonna make a switch, then you're going to have to change what your muscles do in order to be able to play another instrument. And that's bad because you're gonna ruin the embouchure that you have. And you can always tell because your embouchure is gonna feel weak, your lips are gonna get sore. So in choosing another instrument, what you have to remember is you cannot switch from brass to woodwinds or woodwinds to brass because if you do that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna injure your embouchure, it's gonna be sore, your mouth is gonna be weak, you're not gonna be able to sustain tones that you need to sustain. Now, in terms of transference, this is a sasuto flute. This is a penny whistle. This is a melody flute. And they all play about the same. You can, there's a lot of transference. You can go from one to the other on these instruments and there's no problem. I do it all the time and it's not a problem. The little song flute, which I've already played, and this is a fife. I want to show you that the difference between the fife and the flute mouthpieces. The fife is flat to the instrument. It is not raised up. When you get to the flute mouthpieces and the piccolo mouthpieces, they're raised up. But this is flat. And you play across it like you do the flute. So uh, in terms of playing different instruments, my, my take on it is play what you want. As long as you don't do anything that's going to hurt the embouchure of an instrument that you already play, because then you would be really wasting your time, because you'd have to start all over again on another instrument. My father played all the brass instruments, and he did very well with them. My sister, who took trombone and trumpet, but she's basically a classical pianist, said that when she was taking trombone, they told her, don't play trumpet, because even though the mouthpieces are the same shape, the trumpet piece, uh, mouthpiece is so much smaller that it will affect the embouchure for the trombone. Uh, but a lot of people do play both, but you have to keep that into consideration. 
So I, I say play what you want as long as you have the money to, to do it, the time to do it. If you love it, just do it. But be careful and take into consideration those things that you need to take into consideration before you make a choice as to what instrument you want to play. And, and there's no reason why you can't play instruments that are dissimilar. I play woodwinds, but if I decide to play guitar, that's not a problem. I just have to remember I can't transfer any of the knowledge that I have on woodwinds to guitar, except for reading music itself. All music is, is what it is, you know, a half note's always going to be a half note, a quarter note's always going to be a quarter note. So for all instruments, that's going to be the same, and you can transfer your knowledge of music reading, with a possible exception of the drum, because the drum doesn't play notes in the same way that other instruments do, and they have their own set of symbols. They're notes, but they're written in a different kind of way, so we kind of have to exclude the drums from that. So go ahead and play what you want and enjoy every minute of it. I will continue with this discussion next time. Please join me then.